I'm gonna spend the next 10, 15 minutes talking to you about what I do in Belron with Esri software. We've had the software now for about a year, just over a year, so I'm gonna tell you the story of what, what's, what's happened in the last year. Before I do that, a little bit about Belron. Um, as Rich already said, I, I don't know how many of you in the room are American, but uh, yeah, Safelight is a name I'm sure you'll recognize. If you're from Europe, you should recognize the name Carglass. If you're from England, like I am, uh, then Autoglass is the name. And down the other end of the world, we've got Windscreen O'Brien and Smith & Smith in New Zealand. And not forgetting Canada, where we have a couple of brands, as you can see there. Um, last year, we looked after around 16 million consumers across the globe. Uh, around the world, we have over 28,000 employees, 2,500 service locations, and it's actually closer to 11,000 mobile units now. Um, every three seconds, we complete a job for a motorist. So since I've started talking, we've probably done about 60 jobs across the world. The other thing, or one of the other things that we're very proud of in Belron is our eth ethics and the way that we give back to the communities that we work in. Um, all of our major businesses uh, are associated with a local charity or a global charity in some, in some countries, um, and we make sure that we give back to the communities that we work with. Globally last year, it was over 3, 000, over 3 million euros that we gave back across the world. Finally, about me, I've worked for Belron a little bit longer since England were in a World Cup semi-final. Um, I started as a technician, um, and I've done lots of other roles leading me to where I am today. And as you can read there, my role is all around providing insight, which enables inspirational conversations, leading to the right decisions by the relevant people. So, some of the way I do that is by using Esri to do footprint analysis. So how do we go about that? One of our business, business units usually contacts us and say, you know, guys, we need help growing our share. Well, before we can help them, we need some information from the business unit. So we need things like current locations, competitor locations. We need to know what jobs they've done and where they've done them. And we know, need to know where their market is. Um, so where are the vehicles that need work doing? We also take financial data, which we then use for modeling to make sure that wherever we're gonna to suggest to put a location down, it's gonna be profitable. Um, we do then carry out some background checks from data we already hold in the center with data that they've sent into us, and we just make sure it all adds up because sometimes the left hand doesn't quite tell the right hand the same number. So we just make sure we're looking at the same numbers. And we also talk to the business about their growth assumptions. So how long do they want to, or how, how much do they want to grow within the next two years, five years, 10 years? And then we factor that into the work that we do. Once we've got all the data, and again, that's a learning for, for us that we, we really shouldn't set a date for the meeting until we've got all the data in our possession and we've looked at it and it's clean and it's usable. We then set a date for the meeting with a senior leadership team of whichever country we're going to. And again, we've learned through experience that you really do need to work with the senior leaders. Because um, if you don't, there's always a danger that a story might change slightly between whoever you talk to and by the time they talk to their boss or their bosses. So, with all that data, I then build various layers within ArcGIS Pro, put in our, 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 our locations, competitor locations, I map where we've done jobs, where the market is, and I do all the kind of background, nearly boring stuff, but you know, it needs to be done so we can get on and do the bits that really do excite us and add value. Um, I then push all of those layers up into ArcGIS Online, and I build a web map, and then I build various thematics based on um, the, the job data and the market data. We also run various drive times um, for our current locations, uh, and we use those because proximity is very, very critical to a lot of our business. Um, and then finally, I build a web app, and I only use the apps, or I only use the widgets that are gonna make the workshop work. 
I don't use the very, you know, there's hundreds of widgets you can use, and I don't use the ones that are going to make me look clever, but don't actually add any value to what we're doing. Um, so we've done all that. We've set the date. We arrive in country. And as I say, we, we do make sure we're working with a senior leadership team. First hour or so of any of our meetings, I'm afraid, is death by PowerPoint. We go through the process or the, you know, the agenda for the next day and a half, because the sessions that we run usually take about a day and a half. Um, and we then focus for quite some time on the, the, the cycle that we're going to go around, as you can see on the, the screens there. And the other thing that we really, really stress at this stage is the importance of their local knowledge. And that's local knowledge about their business, about their competitors, about the market. Um, it, it, we cannot do these workshops without that local knowledge. I heard a few months ago um, that you can't model local knowledge. And I would back that up 100%. You, you cannot do the work that we do without local people in the room that know their business better than anybody else does. Um, so we've bored them, careful, we've bored them a lot um, with PowerPoint, um, and then we bring the, the maps up on the wall. So the first thing we do is show them where their locations are, and they all go, oh, yeah, okay. And then we show where the competitors are, and we usually get, oh, there's an awful lot of them. Um, and then we put a thematic up. And at this stage, you see this room's silent now because you're all map people. What normally happens to us is that we're projecting on the back of people's heads because they're all up at the map pointing and going, wow, we didn't know that. Look at the share there, look at that. And it happens every single workshop we do. Every time we've been out, we lose it for about five minutes the first time they see a thematic. Now, it's funny, a couple of weeks ago, we were actually in Sweden uh, doing a footprint review. I was going to take a picture of those guys and put it up here today um, just to, you know, show this picture of how we do lose it. So what I'd really say to you guys that are used to using maps, putting data on maps, do not underestimate the power of putting really boring data that these guys see day in, day out on an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF, put it on a map, and to them, it looks completely different, and it opens doors you would not believe. So do not underestimate the power of these things. So once we get the room back, we then show them the areas where we've got potential for growth. Um, we also then start zooming into various areas based on where we do think we've got the biggest potential for growth. And we show the drive times for those areas. Um, we usually run a 20-minute drive time for most rural areas because research has proven that that's about as far as our customers want to travel to come to us. Um, when we're looking at an area, we then use a select tool and select the area, and then you, know, you can look at the data underneath that to see how many jobs we've done, what the market is. Depending on what the growth ambitions are, we can then show them how many incremental jobs there are that are to be done in that area. Um, and then we'll place a red marker in the map um, saying, OK, we need to be there. And we may run a drive time just to see what kind of coverage we're going to get there. Um, we'll then move across into a city. And we'll look in the cities. And for cities, we run 10-minute drive times. Um, again, research has told us in cities, people don't really want to drive more than 10 minutes. So we, we change our approach slightly in a city, but go through the same process of looking how much potential there is. When we're then looking at places at the back of beyond, so like this is northern Norway, we'll run a drive time of an hour um, because, yeah, realistically, you're not going to get anywhere in 20 minutes. And as you can see from this, you don't actually get anywhere in an hour. Um, and in this kind of environment, people are actually happy to wait for a week or more to have work done. Um, so, yeah, we, we run various drive times to see what kind of coverage we can give. We then make sure that we have covered the whole area that we said we're going to do in the workshop. And in this case, it was actually the whole of Norway. So we make sure we've gone all the way around the country, picking out the easy white spots, and then just going back and making sure we haven't missed anything. Um, we also then talk around different operating models. So we don't just put down bricks and mortar normal stores anymore. We'll put down modular locations. 
um, because they're far more cost effective where the market isn't so large. And then we usually wrap up the first day at that stage. We go away, do some financial modeling because um, the Belron team that go out to do the footprints, there's usually three of us. Uh, there's two of us operational guys and we take somebody with us from finance uh, to do all the finance work. And uh, Mike said something earlier on about being kind of cross-functional. Um, so if we're going to go into a country where we know we could run into supply chain issues, we'll take one of our supply chain guys with us as well and we'll, we'll look at it then from a supply chain an angle to bring those costs in. So post-review, after we've finished the meeting, we've finished the second day and we've kind of agreed where they're going to put locations down, um, we leave them with a slightly simplified app so they can go in and look at where the red dots are, which are the, in, in this case is where we potentially want to be. They can look at the thematics and they can look at all their market data on a map. I, I take the buttons away where they can break anything. Um, so again, I've learned that as well. Um, and we also leave them with a, an Excel spreadsheet, which is the financial model that our finance people have worked on with the finance people within the country. Um, and that's, that's what we leave them with. And then we do offer assistance with help implementing the plans, but at this stage, it's, it's very much down to the local people to go out and find the property and, and implement the plan. Um, that is just an example of a modular location um, that, that's actually in Norway, and that's actually in Lillehammer. Um, so again, you, know, you can put these things down in any weather. Um, and since we've been using Esri, um, the, the dark green are countries where we've worked and done footprint reviews. The blue countries are where we know we've still got work to be done. And the hmm, funny gray color countries, um, we've still got work to do there and that's kind of ongoing. So we're still working with Safelight in the States, we're working with Autoglass in the UK and we're, we continue to work with them. So, so far we've done, over, we've done 12 reviews using Esri, we've suggested somewhere over 200, addi 200 additional locations. And probably more importantly, we know that's going to generate several million more profit. Um, we, we've already seen good signs that that has generated profit where we've been. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak here. And thanks to Esri UK for their help as well. Well, that's a great story. And really, thank you for sharing. Um, you know, as you look back over the course of the last year and your experience, what one thing would you share with our friends here that, uh, you know, some sort of piece of advice, if you would? I'll give you two. Okay. <laughs> Do not underestimate the power of putting normal data on a map. Just don't underestimate that. The, 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 the old saying of a picture paints a thousand words, it's true. And the other thing, which is the bit that really, really excites me, is getting out there with the business and working with them. So get off your bum and get out there and work with your customers. <laughs> bit, a bit of British advice there, get off your bum. <laughs> and, then, and then just picking up on, on that point, you know, Sergio did a lot of stuff commuting home, you, you got in country. Yeah. Um, what, you know, what are you doing to capture that local knowledge that you said was so important? We, it's all through two-way communication. Um, we've tried doing that kind of workshop with video conference, and it does work to a degree, but you don't get the, the, the two-way buy-in that you do when you're actually talking to these people face-to-face, because -face. Um, you, you can delve a bit de deeper and push them in different directions depending on how they're answering, um, and then they really get to understand why you're asking the question. Yeah, the human connection. Yeah. 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 Perfect. All right, well, let us thank Steve, Steve again. Steve, thank you very much. <laughs>